chairman in the absence of our senior leader who was on vacation in uh, some nice place, I believe. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> this is a uh, meeting to review the articles that are going to be before the special town meeting on October 19th. And uh, I think we distributed the uh, warrant to all of you by email. And tonight, um, Gloria passed out some of the, um, the items that we will be uh, acting on. So I wanted to, first of all, uh, ask, um, are there minutes? There are no minutes, right? No minutes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the minutes have been uh, reviewed by the <coughs> chairman and vice chairman and then posted after the last meeting. As a practice. Right. That's right. Okay. The uh, second issue is to review the um, the articles and the warrant, and um, just to make sure that we have everybody's agreement on what we're uh, actually going to review. So, Article One is uh, reports of board and committees. That's the moderator. We don't really need to worry about that. Article Two, capital budget, school module, cap classrooms. That's a finance article. Does anyone have any problems with that? No. Article 3 is the capital budget Thompson School expansion. That's also a finance article, so it's appropriate that we look at. Uh, articles 4 and 5 are also financial articles. Uh, they are not going to be presented by the finance committee. They're presented uh, by the community, uh, presented to town meeting by the community preservation committee, which um, by state law uh, presents its articles directly to town meeting, but nonetheless, their financial articles, and um, if, if you so deem it, we'll, we'll review it and support or not support the, uh, the CPA committee. Article 6 is a bylaw amendment, vacant storefront maintenance registry. I don't think that's finance no. article. So everyone agree? No. And then uh, Article 7 is acceptance of legislation, use of parking meter revenue without appropriation. So this is a, sort of a mixed bag. Um, it, it is, um, it's acceptance of legislation, so it's, it's uh, actually an article of the uh, Board of Selectmen that will be before town meeting. However, it does transfer money on a, on a semi-permanent basis from uh, the general fund to the uh, town manager for the use of uh, acquiring and installing parking meters. In, uh, without having to go to town meeting to appropriate funds. So um, I don't know what your thoughts about that are, but my sense is that we sh the town meeting will probably want to know what we think about that article. Yes. Yes. Uh, article 8, acceptance of local speed limits. I don't think that's the same thing with Article 9. Article 10 is a zoning bylaw. And Article 11 is also a zoning bylaw. So that leaves uh, just a few articles. Um, the school uh, budget articles, uh, the uh, CPA articles, and um, Article 7. So if we work uh, expeditiously, we probably can get out early and uh, not have to go back next week. Okay. That's can we the second Okay, um, so on the agenda that I sent out, I asked that the uh, CPA committee pr pr uh, do a short presentation uh, on articles four and five, and then at eight o'clock, uh, the town manager will uh, bring up article seven, and the um, and following that, the superintendent of schools will be here, and the town manager and the superintendent will review the uh, capital articles. So, um, I see. CPA? Yes, Eric. Yes. There, Eric. there you are. Eric. Yes. Would you like to uh, sure. tell us about these articles? If you stand over here, I think the, the cameraman will be appreciative of that. That's good. And if, uh, if our chair, Professor Rowe, arrives, he'll just, he'll just do a swap and you'll pretend like nothing happened. <laughs> so, hi, Eric Helmut, the vice chair of the uh, CPA community. So, the two articles uh, before you regarding CPA appropriations stem from applications that were actually received and vetted during the previous main application cycle. And we didn't forward these to annual town meeting at the time because of their somewhat special nature. The committee was 
was and is very supportive of the substance and the goals of these and very much believes that there is a solid public purpose and public interest in them. However, this being new to the town and these entities being private, private entities rather than town entities, um, on the advice of town council and the special town council that we've retained for CPA matters, we decided to put it off for a few months to give us time to draw up uh, the somewhat more complex agreements that are necessary to ensure the public purpose of these grants and to do some legal research and homework about uh, the deed restrictions. So both of these properties um, in the description of the work is, is, is right in front of you, so I won't go into that. Um, representatives from both entities are, are here to answer any questions you may have about the work. Uh, but both of these properties um, are owned by private nonprofits. And um, the public interest in this, of course, is that both of these, the Jason Russell House and the Old Schwamm Mill, are precious historic resources that are integral to the character of Arlington which is really a bullseye for what that portion of the CPA law is about. It's for uh, pres preserving such resources. So um, with that in mind, we just had to do our due diligence and make sure that there is a public purpose. Because under Massachusetts law, specifically the Anti-Aid Amendment, uh, in order for a, a municipal entity to commit public funds to a private entity, you have to make sure that the public's interest is foremost and is served. Part of that uh, purpose can be public access. And in both of these cases, the Jason Russell House and the Old Schwamm Mill, there's ample public access. Tours that are held regularly for free and by children, school children and all that. And another important aspect of public access is the acquisition of, of a uh, deed restriction, a property restriction for, his, for historic purposes that ensures the perpetual use of that property. And the reason that that's key to the public interest is that that really locks down what the uh, private associations can do with it and ensures that the public interest in historic preservation is perpetual. And Hello. It's up to you. Hi. Are you done yet? No. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, I didn't think I was late. Okay. There's a baseball game tonight. Oh, yes. But not a good team, so we don't have to worry, right? Don't say that. <laughs> no, I'm worried. All right. So where were we at? So uh, I explained why we delayed these and what do the folks here are if they want to discuss the specifics, and they don't have to, but they can. Um, and the whole public purpose thing and the deed restrictions. Um, and I did not get to what the town council told me today about the. Okay. The, uh, you want to say that? I might as well since yes, yeah, since I did. So uh, we have town, town council has re, has reviewed the historic preservation restrictions that have been proposed for both properties and a draft of the grant agreements that would um, that these grants would operate under. And uh, it tells me this afternoon that we have agreement mutual agreement in principle on the key um, aspects of these. There are a few details to be worked out still, but he is confident that we are good to go in this, um, as is the special uh, town council for CPA uh, retained by this committee. Right. Um, what we did this summer was hire an outside counsel who is a historic preservation lawyer, a man named Kevin Bott. Um, he's from uh, um, Anderson Krieger. Luckily, the, the um, town council's office already had an agreement with him because he's done other work for the town. Um, we found him through the Lexington CPC. Um, they had just had work done at the Monroe Tavern, so he'd been helping the town of Lexington with the same sort of um, grant agreements and legal requirements. So he was adept at it, now he's given us sort of a boilerplate, which is very helpful for us, and for Doug. So um, the reason that this is an unusual request is that these are not town-owned properties. And for the most part, um, historic resources are not owned by the towns and cities in the Commonwealth. They, um, we are lucky because we do actually own quite a few. We own the Whittemore Robbins House, which brings in a lot of revenue to the town. And we are lucky to have 
the Jason Russell House is probably one of the most important um, American Revolutionary buildings in the country. To have it in Arlington is terribly important. The old Schwab Mill also is an important part of history. And the oldest um, continuous mill in um, this part of the world. And it is an ongoing mill where people, um, they still are making the frames. And if you haven't been there, you really should go visit. But it's um, both entities are in, in, incredibly important to the tourism efforts of town and bringing money back to the town. So we thought that the, their requests are very um, uh, respectful, small, and ones that I think that we would like to see town meeting approve, and you all too. Any questions? Yes. Yeah. Um, so my understanding, just from what you said in my first pass over this, is that we're, we've already we've already voted and approved the sum of money for the two respective projects. Is that right? No, we have not. Uh, why does it say voted? Well, that's just because just it's a draft. draft. It's a draft. All right. Well, what, that's what, also the, if, uh, is, this hasn't come up before our committee before. No, no it hasn't. First time. It's come up. The voted is our committee vote, and then we have to go to the finance committee, the board of selectmen, and the capital planning committee. Um, those other two entities have voted to support it. Um, and we're hoping you will as well. Just let me, let me clarify one thing, Clarissa. So, um, Bill is right. This is a draft of right. the of the book. Uh, the finance committee would present a town meeting if we support these, and we just uh, wrote up the articles so that you would see what it would look like in front of town meeting. It doesn't mean that you can't edit them, cross yeah, them out, exactly. throw them down, or whatever. It, it, uh, job. Chuck, could I just, just, just to, as a further point of clarification on the vote, because I understand the confusion. Um, by, by, by law, and this is a little unusual, that the CPA committee has to actually put forward the main motion on right. CPA articles. So what you see there in, in voted was actually our vote on the main motion. Um, so what we're asking, so that doesn't represent a proposed uh, FinCom right. vote. Uh, what we're asking tonight is for your questions, your consultation, and we hope a vote of support. Thank you, Larry. Uh, I'm, I have a little wording concern. The Jason Russell House wording doesn't include Jason Russell House. And as I read it, it sounds like the Historical Society could use the money for anything they wanted. Um, right here. Yeah. Oh, and the vote? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think you should just put the address in for both. Yeah, Maybe 7 Jason Street, 17 Hill Lane. Yeah. That's not. Yeah, Jason yeah. Russell House is fine. Yeah. Right. Jason Russell House is fine. It's just not yeah. in the motion whatsoever. That's fine. We will amend it. Thank you. Um, yeah, I don't know what happened. That's why we have this one. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Charlie, I assume that what will actually end up in our report is the same kind of thing we had in <coughs> last. We just say we support the motion of the, of the we'll, we'll say in the comment that this is a, uh, a vote of the uh, Community Preservation Act Committee, and this is, is we support or don't support their uh, recommendations. Any other questions, Dean? So when when town meeting approved the OCOG CPA budget in the spring, and it was a $94,000 reserve fund. So is this article, just so I can, we can also learn this, is this 55,000 coming out of the 94,000, or is it coming out of this year's budget? The 94. Okay, thank you. No, is that true? This year? No. Well, Charlie, the only reason I, I thought that was. I just, my understanding is it comes out of the, it's gonna come out of the 1.5 million. Right? No, John, what I was saying, just, and it, it probably, it's sort of an inside conversation. Like that. When we did the budgeting for the FY, when we did the appropriation for the CPA at town meeting, we had a, we had a bunch, we had, out of the 1.5 million, there was a $94,000 reserve fund. It right. wasn't designated to anything. But that's, that's right, but that's money they spend, for example, on the lawyer. No, no, that's no, that's no, that's no, that's no, that's no, expenses. And we actually would like to spend <clears> it out of the 94 from last year because we'd like them to be able to begin their work soon. So if we were to put it in the 2018 
budget, they couldn't do the work until July 1st. Fair so. enough. Yeah. yeah, there was a budgeted reserve for FY 2017 CPA funds that uh, the town meeting reserved for, for its future appropriation, uh, but that was out of last year's money. So the current fiscal year's money. Okay. So just one second, so can you just repeat again, uh, Eric, <clears throat> these two sums have been or have not been appropriated by town meeting? They have not been appropriated by town meeting. If okay. they are appropriated by town meeting, we will ask the comptroller to take them out of the $94,000 Historic Preservation Reserve. Okay. Well, it's a, the 2017 budget reserve. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Charlie, what I was just sort of clarify, what I was asking, I'm looking at it right now, is when we approved the appropriation of town meeting last year, 700,000 was specific open space recreation projects identified. Right. 300,000 was identified historic. 400,000 was identified affordable housing. 80,000 was the administrative reserve. And then they had a bucket that was called project reserve for 94,000. That was money that they just weren't, they're gonna put like maybe into the reserve fund and come back in a future year to spend it. That's what they said. And so I was just, but my question to them was sort of, is it coming out of that 94 or is it coming out of the following year? Apparently it is. It's yeah. coming out of the 94. The purpose of that was actually to enable specifically what we're asking town meeting to do, which is to fund a project out of FY 2017 CPA resources. Uh, do, does your committee have some means of closing the loop on these projects? In other words, is, is there some way in which when the project is complete, it can be reviewed by you all? In particular, could you then use those results to come to town meeting and talk about, you know, this yes. was really done well, blah, 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 or maybe this didn't work so well, we got to change things? Absolutely, John, and I think that we, in our first year, found that we learned a tremendous amount, and then we designated project, and we're learning more and more. I met this afternoon, this evening, with um, Jim Feeney, who's the assistant town manager. He's going to be assisting us with that closing of the loop. Okay. And I'm really grateful to have him on board because he's, you know, for instance, um, last year we voted to do the Whittemore Carriage House, which is under the auspices of the Health and Human Services Department. They have a lot to do. They don't really need to be overseeing construction. They will be because it's in their name, but Jim Feeney is gonna be the person that really keeps up with the billing, keeps up with the inspection of what's going on. He's the person that's making sure that the procurement um, for the town is being done correctly. And um, I just can't tell you how grateful I am that we have him as part of this effort because I think there are a lot of things that we can learn. One of, he was saying tonight, uh, there there's a new project that's coming in that's very similar to the Spy Pond project the town meeting approved last spring and he thinks there's some overlap and he wants to see if we can do lessons learned from the Spy Pond one so that we don't have to redo it for the, the, um, the Great Meadows master plan that's coming in. So that's exactly what we're gonna try to do. That sounds good, thank you. Did tell you a question on the deed restriction. Is there a duration to that or is that for It, it depends on, it's supposed to be in per perpetuity perpetuity if it's held by the um, the Mass Historical Commission it is and and I believe it is for the town and they're they've got um, that's one of the things that we're working out we want it to be like an affordable housing um, you know easement that gets filed with the um, any new affordable housing we're hoping that that's the, the case that it's in, in perpetuity uh, one question. Have you had any reimbursement from the state that the, the, that match fund was? We're, we will in November. Oh. Um, I think the first week of November. Uh -huh. And luckily, I don't know why, but that Governor Baker, who actually adopted the CPA when he was a selection, uh -huh. put an extra $10 million into the fund. Uh -huh. So we should get more than we expected. Right. Oh. But we don't know quite yet. Yeah. Any other questions? I have one. And this is maybe related to the activities of Jim Feeney, but 
is there a process to actually audit these projects as they're going along to make sure that the money is being spent? Uh, you know, I mean, if yeah. you consider a project for thirty-five thousand, it actually might get done for twenty-five thousand, and somebody might walk away with the other ten thousand. I'm just wondering. How yeah, probably the scallywags behind us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing personal. <laughs> Theoretical question. I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <good. laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> we do have grant agreements, and we will be watching. Um, they are honorable people. Both the boards for both of these two places are very honorable people, and we. But we're going to watch them. <laughs> and we, you know, we, um, Jim will do that. Also, the comptroller has, um, he's being very, very careful, which is a very good thing because he, Rich is new, and this is new for us and new for him, and so he's got a lot of procedures in place. The Community Preservation Committee will be approving all the bills that come in, but um, Jim will be bringing the bills to us with Amy. And so we will um, really have an idea of what's going on. And it's a small town. We go by the um, area quite a bit, so we'll be watching. Measure the number of paint cans. And yeah. yeah. And there's a requirement for document. The yeah, grant agreements will have a requirement that expenses be documented and, right. and you know, backed up, not just, they don't, they just they, they, uh, we, our, we don't allow our grantees to just say, well, please give us a check for X amount of money. When we're actually trying to, Jim and I talked tonight about was there a way we could get a quarterly report or something for the entities. I mean, we're, we're lucky we have the Park and Recreation com a Commissioner, we have a Housing Commissioner, we have a um, Conservation Commissioner, and we have um, the Redevelopment Board, and what am I forgetting? Historic Commission. And they can report on their projects. But I think for those projects that we can't get reports from, we'll ask Jim to make sure that we get written reports quarterly. Great. Other questions? Okay. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. I appreciate you taking the time to come out tonight. I hope I didn't talk to you. <laughs> Perfect. We're out of time. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the next is, uh, is the town manager, uh, who might be a little bit late tonight. But the deputy town manager is here. Sandy? Charlie, I think we're seven minutes for her. We'll need to go down to eight. But we are seven minutes for Thank you. <laughs> we want to vote. Um, we could, yeah, we have seven minutes. We could, um, <coughs> so let's. Um, so first of all, is there any discussion on Article 4? Four. 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 Uh, we have a couple of minutes just so that's our efficiency expert. Well, now we could get home earlier if we use the time appropriately. So um, the first is the um, Jason Russell House. So any any comments or questions or anything that anybody wants to put that so um, I've entertained a motion by someone to uh, ask the Finance Committee to support the Community Preservation Committee on uh, Article 4. Well, it was recommended. Provided they put in the address. Yeah, right. provided they put the address. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing no objections, passed unanimously. Article 5, the appropriation for the Old, old Shore Mill, $20,000. Um, again, assuming that the address gets appropriately inserted into the vote, yeah. um, any, any discussion? I will say that they certainly put in a lot of effort into creating this document that they put together for their application. I, I admit that I have not read the whole thing. I, actually, yes, uh, uh, Brian Rarig and I went to the CPA review committee last year when I first read that. Uh, they did a lot of work. Right. So moved. Second. 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 All in favor of uh, supporting the CPA uh, committee on Article 5. Aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Hearing no objections? All say unanimously. Thank you. 
Mr. Town Manager. Thank you for coming. So, um, very timely. Thank you for the fall bill. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you very much. Good luck with you, man. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you for your help. Appreciate it. Thank you. So, um, Adam, we, uh, we just finished the CPA uh, articles, and I think uh, Kathy Bodie said that she was going to be coming tonight, and uh, so I thought we'd do the um, Article 7 first. Excuse me. Which is uh, the parking meter article. The committee decided that uh, 4, 5, 7, and the two CPA articles, the other one would be the other one would be the you want me to just jump right in? Jump right in, all right. Thank you. Uh, sorry, I uh, just arrived. I had a Chamber of Commerce at their annual dinner tonight with their Citizen of the Year Award, so I needed to show my, show my face there and then try to get there uh, right on cue. Uh, so Article 7 is, um, the article itself, the action that we're asking at town meeting, is acceptance of a state law. So I, I don't believe there's an actual recommended uh, vote uh, needed by the Finance Committee, but since it deals with money uh, or, or town funds, uh, I definitely felt, and I know the chairman felt, that it was appropriate for me to come discuss it tonight. So in short, um, earlier this summer, the Municipal Modernization Act was passed that literally had hundreds of mostly small changes to the way uh, statute treats things, uh, the way we need to do things in local government. So uh, on a go-forward basis, there's probably going to be a number of things that or Slackman, the Finance Committee, and Town Meeting are asked to take a look at as we go through all of them and decide whether or not we want to take advantage of some of those updates. This particular update <coughs> dealt with how communities can acquire and install parking meters and how they can pay for them. The prior state law said that a town, a city or town, could acquire and install parking meters without appropriation and then pay for those that acquisition and installation over the period of five years. It, simply said that a town could do it. The new law says that any town that accepts this section of statute can acquire and install parking meters and for a period of five years, pay for that acquisition and installation out of the revenue collected. So we entered into the agreement uh, to install the parking meters, which are actually being installed literally uh, this week. Maybe some of you have seen the holes going into the ground in Arlington Center uh, before the Municipal Modernization Act passed. But since it passed and it changed the need to have local acceptance, uh, talking about it with Sandy, the comptroller, town council, we felt like it would be appropriate to move this forward. So not that we would necessarily legally fall out of compliance, but we want to stay in compliance with the current reading of the law. So just to sort of walk through the, the function of it, um, I put together just a, a quick uh, chart in the document that I passed around. The top box are, uh, just two estimates of what we think uh, in terms of a range of what we might be able to collect from the meters are being, that are being installed. Uh, we're installing uh, 225 meters. They're going to be metered for 12 hours a day. Uh, hourly rate is one. And then we use two occupancy rates. These were recommended as a range by uh, the parking meter uh, company that we ended up buying the meters from. So you can see on the high end, if we achieve an 85% occupancy rate, the estimated annual <coughs> revenue of just over 700000 uh, 50% occupancy, uh, revenue of 421000 Most likely, as with most ranges, it'll probably be somewhere in between those two figures, but that gives you a sense of the type of revenue that we're talking about being collected by the meters. So below that, you can see the second box, projected annual meter and parking management costs. Uh, I have it broken up into several categories. Um, the only category that I'm talking about spending without appropriation is the first line the equipment lease. That's the annual amount over five years that we would that we owe for the acquisition and installation of the meters. So what we'd be saying is without any town meeting appropriation, we collect the revenue, put it into a fund, the controller will segregate it into a fund, and it pays those annual, or they, they actually are quarterly, but they add up to that annual figure, lease payments to the company. Everything else there would need uh, to be appropriated. I don't think the law allows for those other expenses uh, to be uh, spent without appropriation. But I wanted to paint a picture of what, uh, both in that second and that third box, the total 
costs we can see um, through this parking management plan uh, because the statute also says that you should not be setting your fees higher than the cost of acquiring, installing, operating, managing, enforcing, and other parking and traffic related activities. Uh, so that's what we have laid out here. Um, the only other thing I'll mention is in the second box, starting with administrative salaries, administrative expenses, uh, and enforcement salaries, those are the actual budgeted figures from the FY17 budget for parking, so those are already budgeted amounts. Um, I, think that, I think that covers it. So basically, again, um, what we're doing is asking for acceptance of the statute that will allow us to do this uh, so that we, for lack of a better term to put it, stay in compliance with the action that we already started. Thank you, Adam. Questions? Peter. So I don't quite understand where would this would go in your budget. So everything other than the equipment lease would be budgeted just like any departmental operating budget. What we're saying is for the equipment lease, it will be segregated into a special fund and then directly pay the equipment lease. What I would probably do in terms of reporting uh, in the town meeting process is maybe report it in either an appendix uh, or ask that the finance committee include it as an appendix to the finance committee report, uh, maybe something like a revolving fund so that there is some reporting on what's going in and out of the fund. My question was, I didn't ask it very well. Other than the equipment lease, uh, where will the other costs, will the other costs be grouped into one line item? Uh, no, we'll, we probably break it out with a little more detail than what the parking budget currently has. I think the parking budget just has salaries, longevity, overtime, and then printing and other expenses. I think we break it out a little more detail in the parking budget next year. Okay. Uh, after five years, will we own the meters? We will, yeah. And will there be, uh, is, is equipment maintenance included for the five years in this 51997 uh, yeah, they will service the meter. We, we have to pay for the parts, but they will service the meters. And then after the five years, there'll be presumably some yeah. Either new budget item. Replacement or whatever it might be. Just a question on the line items. And then credit card processing, I imagine the meters will accept credit cards. Yes. yes. And will there be a fee on top of the... Um, no, we, to, to offset this expense? In other words, to the user, if you decide to use a credit card, will there be a, a premium for the, uh, no, the we, use of that? We will, we're just charging one amount, and we will, the town will pay the fee. Okay. And there's, there's actually two parts of the credit card processing. There is the, the meter itself charges a 12 cent fee to the meter company for processing it, and then our own credit card processor uh, charges us a 13 cent, so basically a quarter for every credit card process. Okay. And, and in the future, I'm sorry, no, no, is no, there, no. It, and then there may not be enough to justify an app, but in, like in Boston, for example, they have a, a parking app that you can pay your meter with a credit card. Will that technology be available? It is compatible with that, yes. Okay. So the company, uh, the company's called IPS. Uh, if you, any of you have ever parked in Davis Square, uh, it's the same meter that's in Davis Square. Um, they have their own app, and they're compatible with other apps. Okay. So we've taken a look at a few of them. We weren't, we're not ready to roll it out yet, but it absolutely is ready to okay. do that. So um, I was curious, in some other towns with, that have the parking meters, if you use your credit card, then it, it's a, a minimum amount you're paying. So you can't like do it hourly if you use a credit card. Are you going to be able to do that here? Uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I want to double check that we because the, in other towns, what if you use the credit card, then you're paying a minimum of two to four hours as opposed to just hour by hour. I think we agreed on a one hour minimum for the credit card, but okay. nothing more than that. I think that's what we agreed on. Well, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> the, you say the people who install these that kind of service, them. so we don't, the town is not going to hire anybody to service you. No, I don't believe for at least the first five well, years. Who's going to pick up the money and come? No. Right now, we we have Brinks. Uh, they they pick up the multi-space meters. We're going to continue to work with them for the single-space meters. Uh, quite frankly, we're not totally positive or confident that they will be able to handle it in the manner which we want them to. So if that doesn't work out, we'll look at whether or not we want to look at another firm or consider hiring somebody to collect it. Thank you. Thank you.
Brinks goes around and opens up every meter and they will do it. Okay. Well, do you happen to know how the, the costs of paying someone to empty the meters and the, for the coins compares to the cost of the credit card? Is it actually cheaper for the town if they use the credit card or is it a comparable cost? That's a good question. You know, I, I actually I don't know that I can intelligently answer that. Is it, John, is there some? Uh, I presume these things are all computerized and probably on the on the web as well. If yeah. Each meter on the web. Can, can well, you get? A, it is connected. Yes, it, yes. They so all have their own. So you get a report of how much revenue you've taken in. Yes. So it can close a loop on breaks as well? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Every transaction is yeah. okay. Just to throw something in, I happen to observe both in Lexington, I think also in Arlington, when they go around to uh, take the coins from the meter, it's almost, it's, it's very automated. In other words, if the vice goes in, the meter gets empty and then closes and then it, uh, a little flap goes back on the meter. And it appears that uh, it's really uh, a device that uh, precludes anybody who's collecting money to have their hand in the uh, jars. So it's true. So yeah, it's a very secure, it looks like a very secure system. I think, so. I think that's generally true. It's basically in the multi-space meters, it's like a box you pull out and you put an empty box in. And in the smaller ones, it's a smaller little unit that comes out and you can put an empty one in. I think, you know, whether it be parking collections or bus fares or whatever it might be, people always say, you know, you built a better mousetrap and someone will figure out how to, <laughs> how to, try, to, how to try to steal it. And I, I think it's much safer than maybe in years past where you just open something and coins pour it out. So I think it is more for uh, fraud. Other questions? I have one. Yeah. Is the rate variable, are you going to be able to, you know, like when you have a Friday night in high demand, can you raise it? So the answer, the answer is yes, the technology would let us. Um, I don't think we're ready to take that policy step yet, right. but uh, the technology, if, we, if the Board of Selectmen voted tomorrow to do it, it could be programmed to do it. In the apps that you're referring to, that will they, can they alert somebody that their meters? Yeah, my understanding is they would alert you if you're running out and then allow you to feed the meter basically from your app so you wouldn't have to go back out to it. So it's quite possible. I mean, Pretty high utilization. Yeah. So, what are the 12 hours that they'll be? Um, eight to eight. Oh, okay. Yeah, and, and what's, what's the, I see the budget amounts for enforcement, but has the enforcement times been increased? Because enforcement, what time does enforcement end currently? <coughs> so, because the meters in the multi space, <coughs> the multi -space meters in the lots have gone to eight o'clock, they used to be six, we now do have coverage. Okay. Um, I, I think we'll do about Take, do a couple months, see how enforcement goes with, uh, with the three officers we have, and if we need to add uh, further staffing. <coughs> I think if we need to add further staffing, there's plenty of revenue to justify it to, to achieve the parking management goal. What, what's your hours going to be? Say that again. Your yeah, hours. When, when are the meters going to be on? Yeah. Eight, eight to eight, Monday, eight to eight, Monday through Saturday. No, nothing on Sunday. Nothing on Sunday. So, what you said. Adam, was that um, everything except the equipment lease is already in the budget. So this is uh, strategically pretty important set. Yep. Other questions? All right, great. So moving on to the next um, subject is articles uh, two and three. Dr. Bodie is here. Yes. wording that's going to be true of the, of the article or of the vote for Article 7? Uh, so I, I don't have it on me, but the select and vote is we, we recommend to meeting adopt XYZ section of it. It's, it's a very, it's like a one sentence. Okay. okay. Sure. I'm saying you want to shoot one up here. Thank you, Daddy. So, 
Article two is uh, funding for the. Yeah, pass those around, please. Uh, Article two is funding for the um, modulars at Odyssey, and Article three is funding for the expansion of the Thompson School. So. Uh, okay. Okay. Did you want me to pass this out? Like, to speak to the. Sure. Last. Hello, everybody, by the way. Hi. Seen you in a few months. Mm -hmm. two subjects and therefore have to be certified in both subjects. Each of the grades have a half cluster, so we have 3.5 clusters at each level. But in order to do that required quite a bit of disruption to the school over the summer. Um, we, first of all, look, we had to find two classrooms that work. We had to convert one of them to a science room. It had a domino effect through the whole building and leading up to what my recommendation is. The, uh, so you understand it. So there was a lot that was done in order to accommodate these additional students in the building. We're looking at one more year of this before we move to the sixth grade at Gibbs. And um, after much thought about it, we talked about it over the summer, and we really were able to look at it more closely and see how it was working once school started. The recommendation is not to add any modulars at Audison next year. Um, there was a number of reasons which I've outlined in this uh, recommendation, but it, there was quite an investment of time, energy, money into reconfiguring the school so that would work this year. A lot went into putting in a schedule, which is a very challenging thing. The middle school schedules are the most challenging. And uh, where we're going to have an increase in students next year is going to be in the neighborhood of about 40 students dispersed across the three grades because essentially we're picking up the 40 because the eighth grade, which is in the 300s, is moving to the high school and all the other grades are going to be in the 400s. So um, we have it, it's working. It doesn't mean that it's not tight, it is particularly where we see that the, the feeling is in the corridors when students change classes, um, the cafeteria, and just the time it takes from somebody from the sixth, the sixth grade to move down to a music room. So it's, it's just because of the sheer number of students. Adding a modular or two is not going to appreciably, in fact, it's not going to do anything for the core problems of the school. Um, and it would have the effect of, um, first of all, taking up a lot of space in the parking lot, which is a huge problem up there, parking. We have, we have a major issue that we don't have enough parking for all staff. And, but more importantly, it's very expensive, it's very disruptive. Adding modules, which we've gone through in this district, takes a lot of time. Uh, of our facilities department, of our custodians, of our administrators, teachers. It's just time consuming. And the, the feeling of administration at Audison was at the time 
devoted to incorporating a modular, changing the schedule, rearranging things again, uh, would be best served toward planning for the move to Gibbs, which is going to take a lot of time, and as well as planning for how Addison itself is going to be reconstructed, reconfigured, I should say, when um, the sixth grade moves. So the staff is aware of this um, in, a, in a joint a strong recommendation from all, uh, all the entire administration over there after looking at all the different factors. So that, that's a good news in terms of money that we would have to raise for it, but it's not real. The, the expense of it was just one of the factors uh, involved. It wasn't the entire factor. But as I said to uh, Mr. Foskett, that you know, when we go to, to reconfigure any audits in the following year, we're probably going to need some funds to, uh, to do some work there um, so that it's, um, uh, we can, that there's a little bit, that it's, that it's made a little bit nicer, especially since we're going to have a very nice school for the sixth grade. So that's, that's the, the uh, essentials of it. I know you've heard we've needed eight modulars, ten modulars, and that would be true. That would be absolutely true if we did not have the sixth grade going to Gibbs. Um, we are bursting at the seams there. Um, we could handle this one more year, albeit, as I said tightly, beyond next year, it's not possible. It's just too many kids in that building if we keep incrementally growing. So. Um, I applaud the administration and the teachers who are understanding this and uh, we'll make it work. Thank you, Dr. Bowden. So that's, you're, you're recommending that you're <coughs> not going to go forward with that Correct. request, so mm -hmm. our vote would automatically just be no action. Mm -hmm. So <coughs> to avoid debating no action order, <laughs> <laughs> let's move on to... Um, Shall I get a question? Oh, yes. Once the sixth grade moves out of the, the uh, junior, not the junior high anymore, the middle school, does that relieve the congestion and so forth up there? Significantly. Yeah. Um, I wish you could all come over and watch the change in classes, as, especially as the little sixth graders try to make their way across the school down to a gym or down to a music room. It's, I think that, that that's where they feel the most. When I say reconfigure, right now, um, those who are familiar with middle school, seventh and eighth grade are in the same wing. Uh, one's on one block, floor and the other. But their half clusters are not there. They're in different parts of the building. So I think some thoughts gonna need to go into well, how do we want the seventh grade to be together in the eighth grade and where do we want to put some of the world language classes from where they are. Um, so this a, a lot of thought that needs to go into that as well. Um, and there's gonna be a lot of moving that's gonna go on there. So the more we can have a year where teachers have, don't have to do another shifting around, the better, because they are gonna <coughs> be shifting the following year. A lot, the majority of the teachers in the building. Steve, yeah, I'm interested. And I have a question about elementary, I'll wait till I three in a minute, but what's the current enrollment of eighth grade students at the US? I'm just trying to get a handle on what's coming in versus what's leaving in terms of the community. Yes, I think 375, 380. Yeah, uh -huh. okay. So, so that's a hefty increase in the 375 are leaving, or roughly 435, maybe if it's 95% are coming in. 84 students increase. Yeah. But next year will be similar, right? About 40. Okay. Yeah, Steve, if we had nobody, right now we have let's say 1,211 students in the school. Um, assuming attrition between fifth and sixth grade, sixth grade, they're expecting 1,250 students mm -hmm. under a apocalyptic scenario where literally nobody left, we have 1,300 kids in the morning. So you'd say, we're expecting 1,250, Armageddon would be 1,300. At the risk of debating a no action article, any other questions? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just worried that this ball's going to have me watch the game. Now. I don't want to have a Okay, thank you, Dr. Bode. Um, so the next article is Article 4, which is the uh, expansion of the uh, Thompson School. 
And I just would like to remind the committee that this is an article which, uh, this is a, a subject, uh, an expense, if you use that term, that was voted by the citizens of the town to be excluded from the limitations of Proposition 2 and half in the um, debt exclusion referendum last spring. So, with that comment, Adam, do you want to start this or Dr. Bowden? Why don't you talk about the, the, the need being met, and then I will talk yes, about the well, financing. Um, not surprisingly, last night, Oscar <coughs> really summarized it very succinctly. Last year, the school enrollment task force wanted to defer a final recommendation on Thompson Edition to see what would happen with enrollment this year with um, the, with the um, expectation that if we met the expected enrollment growth or exceeded it, then that would be an indication we'd go forward with the school. Because the, the, the previous year there had been um, fewer students than expected. Well, I think the number expected this year was 448, and we have um, 465 as of today. We continue to enroll students. So we have ex definitely exceeded that, the number that was um, expected. And so last night, the School Enrollment Task Force um, unanimously voted to recommend that we go forward with the addition. In terms of my recommendation about this, I was looking at the, we have um, a new set of numbers from Dr. McKibben, who did our forecasting last year. We asked him to do an early forecast based on our August 11th numbers in anticipation of needing to bring it to the school enrollment task force, which he did. And what we saw there was um, actually something a little bit closer to what his first forecast was, because you remember last December there was some uh, moderation of it. But when you look out over the next 10 years for Thompson, you're going to see kindergartens that are in the 80s. It doesn't really even, it, so when you get into the 80s in kindergartens, that's, that is four classes. Um, you pretty much will have four classes, actually to say the truth, probably over 75, because you don't want to have kindergartens as big as 25. So we know that we're going to have four kindergartens for the foreseeable future, and, as, and right now the first grade, the second grade, all have four. Third, fourth, and fifth, three. So as we progress each year, we're going to be having another four, three going out, four coming in. And so each of the next three years, we need done classrooms. So if Thompson was built with 19 classrooms, we need 24. And so the, the addition will provide five classrooms, and then the, the sixth row, because you can't build five really on a school, uh, the sixth one will actually satisfy another need of the building, which is more core space for activities, gym. Thompson is no different, but we, we overlap a lot of gym classes because we just don't have enough, we don't have enough space for um, all the classes that we have. So that's the, that's the recommendation, and I think uh, Adam wants to talk to, I don't know if you want to talk to yep. the cost yeah. of this. So does everybody have a uh, this spreadsheet? Uh, so what I've provided here is we had actually opened the bids for the Thompson construction yesterday. And I've just given you two brief scenarios. One is the low bidder that we received. The second is the, the second low bid. The reason I've given you both is, so the low bid is a company that we don't have any familiarity with and our OPM doesn't have any familiarity with. So we want to vet them, make sure that there's nothing in their DCAM files that would give us concern or reason to not accept them. The second low bid is a company called GNR that built the Thompson originally and is doing the Stratton project, so we have a great deal of familiarity with them. And should we find reason to kick out the low bid, I could not see us going past the second low bid. Um, <clears throat> so you can see in the low scenario, we're at just over 3.8 million. In the higher scenario, where we to go there, uh, we're just over 4 million. So what um, I would be asking the Finance Committee to consider tonight is uh, voting to approve an appropriation and bond authorization of $4 million, which would certainly uh, be enough to cover the costs expected in the low bid, um, just short of what we would need in the second low bid, but the superintendent and I and um, Sandy spoke today, and 
whether it be through uh, some portion of school funding or potentially further conversations uh, with the capital plan, we think we'd be able to break that uh, $49,000 gap if it was necessary. Uh, one other thing, um, yeah, has the language? Uh, yes, the, the, the language, language has been good. So you, you, you'll notice um, at the uh, very wise recommendation of uh, Sandy, uh, once again, the Municipal Modernization Act updated uh, updated the ability of what a town can do when it receives a bond premium, when it borrows. Um, formerly, those would be held into a separate account and would need to be either further appropriated or rolled into free cash the next year. Now, if a premium is being received uh, without any further vote, it can actually reduce the cost that is being borrowed. So we had this reviewed by bond council today and by inserting the last part of the language there, we would have the ability to do that when we went out tomorrow if a bond premium was being offered by the bond buyers. Could that somehow be used to cover the $40,000? Yeah. No, I don't think so for two reasons. One is um, because this is subject to debt exclusion, um, the state requires you to, uh, if, if we didn't have this language in here now, the state would require us to amortize the um, premium out over the term of the bond so that the amount of excluded debt that applies to people's tax bills, the, Addition, the increment um, would come down a little bit to reflect that premium. So it's the net that they have to pay. Uh, so, uh, so the, in other words, you can't use that money for a different purpose. You would have to reduce the, the hit to the taxpayers. So by doing this instead, what we're doing is just borrowing less uh, than we otherwise would so that the net effect of the taxpayers would be the same. Does that make sense? No. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I say it in a different way. Um, we still couldn't spend more than was appropriate. So even if we reduced a four million dollar borrowing by, you know, let's say it wasn't the premium was exactly forty nine thousand, we still would be able to spend forty nine thousand yeah. dollars over four million. Yeah. Okay. Questions. Did I hear you correctly that this second lowest bid is the was the contractor who built this for yourself? Okay. It's your last chance. <laughs> All right. Well, I think uh, after this excellent presentation, there are no further questions. <laughs> So thank you very much for uh, taking the time to come out tonight. Charlie, I got a question for you too. How's the uh, the uh, uh, Stratton going with the modules up there? The, what the monitors? The modules. modules. The modules. Yeah. It's going very well. Yeah. Um, the they were the big the teachers like them. Their air conditioning was yeah. oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, they're a little more spacious than th I think the teachers thought they would be. Mm -hmm. the, the other concern, of course, was what about all of the special, what about library, and what lunch, and music, and teacher work? So we have multi-purpose the old cafeteria, mm -hmm. and, uh, it's, and it's quite, um, it's divided so that we have a, a library and a little part of it, and cafeteria, Teachers room on, up on the stage. That's where music is. And mm. So it's it's being every every inch is being u utilized. Um, but it's, it's going very well. Mm. Unfortunately, there was some vandalism over the weekend, uh, but that's all been cleared up. Yeah. Um, <coughs> yeah, because I was watching it this summer. I, that's my neighborhood. Up, you know, at fifteen, and I was cruising by there a couple times. I kept looking. I said, "How the heck are they going to get this?" together. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they did. They, they, they worked very hard. My, my hat's off to the people who are managing the project and to DPW too because another issue um, came up with well, what about parking? 
Yeah. And so DPW came in and put down an asphalt parking lot, which will then have to be re taken up again um, after the project's over and new irrigation put in and the field restored. How, how's the uh, what, how's the contractor doing the service? Remodeling. No, I'm not. In fact, I think they might be ahead of schedule. They're ahead of schedule. Mm -hmm. I know. It's really, really they're doing. They're doing well. Any other questions? Okay. Great. Thank you. So, going directly to Article um, Seven, the uh, parking meter, uh, acceptance parking meter legislation. Any? Discussion on that? I think, uh, is there a recommendation for a motion? Go yeah. ahead, Second. Second. So, uh, motion by Bill for a favorable action on the parking meter uh, article. I mean, is it supporting, supporting the recommendation? Supporting, support. supporting the action of the board selectmen. Um, and it's been seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing no objections, this passed unanimously. Um, <coughs> on Article 3, which the uh, superintendent has asked to, to have removed, uh, okay. motion of no action is in order. Article 2. I'm sorry, Article 2. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing no objection, that's also passed. Article 3, for um, the supporting the motion uh, presented by the town manager for uh, $4 million of uh, debt authorization according to the wording that's presented in your draft um, report. This is the draft or is it the handout? Well, I think it's the same thing. It should be. I think it's the it same thing. Same. Yeah. 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 Since we got the draft. So moved. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing no objections, that's also passed. Thank you very much. Appreciate you coming out today.